Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven, and I'm a little nervous to say this, but Ray's Week is back. Welcome to the Ray's Week Reboots, part two, part three. I'm, I don't really know exactly what to call it. If you guys are true OGs, if you've been watching me for a long time, you know that I had a series called Ray's Week back in the day. It was a long running series. I think I did like 50 episodes of it or something like that. And it basically was just day in my life, daily vlogging, every week, every Sunday, I would post, here's what I did this week type of thing. Kind of in-depth, personal, behind the scenes view of my actual daily life instead of focusing on individual topics for each video. And you guys really loved it. And it was a very successful series on my channel. And it was kind of back before a lot of people were doing the weekly vlog thing, but then I stopped doing it. For various reasons, I stopped doing it. And then in 2020, I tried to bring it back and I only did like two or three episodes and I got overwhelmed with it again and it just felt like it wasn't working again. So I stopped doing it again and that was a very short lived. I don't even wanna call it a reboot because I didn't even fully reboot it, but I'm back in the mindset of wanting to do the weekly vlogs again. I do miss it. I gotta be honest with y'all, I miss it. I miss just the down to earth, follow me around. Here's what I'm doing today. Who knows what we're gonna be up to in this video. It's gonna be a mix of things. Like I miss having that variation and just raw, real, my life, just sharing my life with you guys. I feel like a lot of the videos I've been doing recently have been more just focused on individual niche topics. Like in this video, we're gonna be party planning. In this video, we're gonna be organizing my pantry. And like those things are cool and I love those things, but I feel like there's been a lack of just personal, I don't know, just that weekly vlog style content. I know you guys have been missing it. You guys have been requesting it. I did my focus group with you guys. If you saw that vlog that I did where I talked about doing a focus group to kind of talk to my viewers and ask y'all what y'all wanted to see. And that was a big thing that got brought up in the focus group is we want to get back to the personal stuff. We want to get back to the everyday stuff. We love all these topics you're focusing on, but we want to see more of the in between behind the scenes. And I heard y'all and I understand it and I definitely miss doing it. So we're back. Said all that to say, here we go again. Let's try it out. Let's just see. Today is Monday, January 23rd, I want to say. And so far today, I had all of my Monday meetings. So every Monday, the RETV team has multiple meetings. It's kind of like our weekly check-in. We have different meetings with different people for different reasons, but we're kind of just running through everything that's going on within RETV. So all of my content and all of my projects and all of my things, the many things that I have, whether it be brand deals or stuff like that, I'm talking to my whole team. So my mom, my new personal assistant, Zoe, my little sister also is still my virtual assistant. And then we have Brianna, who's my manager. We have Taylor, who's my operations coordinator. I always like don't really know exactly what to call her. We kind of all get together either in person or through Zoom and we meet. So did all the Monday meetings this morning. Then we actually decided to go to lunch. Normally we like order in and we kind of are cooped up in the house. But we're like, let's go out to lunch and finish talking about the stuff we need to talk about. So me and and my mom and Zoe went out to lunch, went to Hop Dottie, had us a good old burger and truffle fries. And we were basically talking about this, the fact that I wanna start doing weekly vlogs again and how are we gonna swing that and how can we kind of pre-plan and still stay organized with that type of content. And we were also just discussing like TikTok strategy and more YouTube strategy stuff, just kind of like content planning and prepping and you know, all that type of stuff, as well as talking about the plan for this Galentine's girls night party party that I'm throwing this weekend actually. So today is Monday, the party is on Saturday. I wanted to do a cute little girls night situation. I mentioned in um, my other video how this year I wanna do more smaller, intimate, less stressful gatherings sprinkled into the big parties that I always throw. So I thought Galentine's would be a perfect opportunity to do like a smaller intimate thing, but still make it cute and still make it special for my friends. So I'm working on getting all the stuff together for that. Zoe is really helping me a lot with gathering inspiration and making a shopping list and finding links to products and stuff like that. So we were just discussing all the things that I wanted for the party over lunch. Meanwhile, I had the painters here at my house doing all of the interior repainting because of all of the 
drywall patching that they had to do that I told you guys about in my last video. So they had finished all the patching, but they had to come back today and paint everything. And while they were at it, I just wanted them to basically touch up. Like 99% of my house is white walls. Of course, I have my pink walls in my office and we have different paint and wallpaper in Zaya's room. But other than that, every other room is pure white walls. And of course, it gets scuffed up really easily. So there was a lot of like scuff marks and just like wear and tear on top of the patchwork that they had to do. So I just had painters come and basically just repaint the whole house pretty much. So it's looking a lot fresher in here. I think they're just gonna have to come back tomorrow and do a few more little touch up spots, but it smells very painty in here and it looks a lot fresher. So I'm happy with it. I feel like that was a good decision to just go ahead and get the whole house touched up. I've been living in this house for like three years now. Time has really flown and three years of wear and tear with no touch up, it was starting to look a little dingy. So yeah, we're back from lunch now and I just need to continue planning the Galentine's, Valentine's girls night party. That's like one of the pressing things for today that I need to flesh out with Zoe so that I know exactly what I need to be ordering and getting together because I only have a few days to get all this stuff together. Here's Zoe's Pinterest board so far. We've got like the little skewers, all the little pancake stacks, charcuterie, heart-shaped waffles, little sweet charcuterie thing. I saw this on TikTok. It's made out of balloons and you make like a giant chocolate box. That would be a fun DIY to make. Or here's like another one. You know, like those foil balloons, heart shape, clear shape, circle shape. All right, so right now I have friendship bracelets, matching clothes, preferably hoodies, a Valentine charcuterie board, and waffle station. Do we want like a backdrop? Like photo backdrop? Yes, I definitely want to have some key decoration thingy. I like the, the giant chocolate box thing. That's a little bit advanced. <laughs> a little complicated. On such short notice, but I do really like that idea. I really liked the heart the, shaped yeah, foil balloons. The balloon stuff to the wall. So like yeah. obviously the main area is going to be in the living room and I have the glass. Like where I did the snowflakes before, Yeah. that would probably be where I put the heart shaped balloons if I did that. Do you want other decorations besides that? Yeah. So I'm imagining, like, I always think of it as, like, the room. So if it's it's living room, kitchen, living room, it's like, okay, movie night. So you have the coffee, you have the couch, coffee table, things on the coffee table, whether like, do we have the friendship bracelet set up on the coffee table or do we have snacks on the coffee table? And that kind of in and of itself is a decoration, yeah. you know what I mean? And then maybe the couch is styled with certain pillows and blankets, like pink and red. Then you have the glass wall behind it that we could do the balloons on. Then like in the kitchen, I usually always use like the main kitchen island as like a main setup spot. Yeah. So that's kind of like, is there more food there? Or is that where we have the friendship bracelets? And a lot of times like I'll hang, like I have those two hanging lights above the island and like that's where you can kind of like hang a banner or gotcha. streamers or something from the lights. I don't think we need to go too crazy with the decorations just because it's like, it's low key. This is not a extravaganza like some of my other parties. This is just like girls night, so. But I think we could put like the waffle station on like the kitchen island, have it all set up, mm -hmm. and then we could do like streamers hanging from the ceilings or the lights. Everyone always wants a photo with their friend. Yeah. And you need something cute to stand in front of. Mm -hmm. We could put like a snack cart mm -hmm. in the living room and then have friendship bracelets going on the coffee table. Surprisingly, I do not own a bar cart. That seems like something I would own, but I don't. So I'd have to get something. The closest thing to like a cart that I have is like that, that clear thing in my glam room that has my makeup brushes on it. That's pretty small. It's small. I think we can find something really cool, secondhand or in store. I have a general idea of who I want to come since it's like such a small thing. I kind of already like individually reached out to people, but I want to send out a proper invite and get proper confirmation of who's coming because I think I'm going to be doing some sort of custom party favor or hoodie or something. So I need to know exactly who's coming so I can like customize their hoodie or whatever I end up doing. So I am going on Canva now if my internet 
that would work. That would be amazing. If you guys have watched any of my other party planning videos, I always use Canva to use their templates and then further customize it for whatever theme I'm doing for the party. And then if I need to keep up with a large list of RSVPs, I use Evite for the actual like RSVP part. But for this, it's gonna be only a few people so I can keep up with it based on who replies. So I'm on Canva and I just typed in Valentine's Day invitation. They have all these different templates, but I always like to add a little of my own razzle dazzle. So I don't like this stamp on here. I'm just gonna delete that. Of course, change all the text and I'll probably add some additional graphics to make it more custom to the theme of my party, which is a girl's night movie party. So if I go over to elements and type in like movie night and get some additional graphics to kind of like add in or whatever. So I'm gonna mess around with it and then I'll show y'all. Okay, here's invitation. I ended up not really adding too, too much to it. Just kind of adjusting the text. That's so a Galentine's movie night celebrating self-love and friendship with the comfy girls night in. <laughs> we have the date and then obviously I'll put my address here and I asked them to please provide their hoodie size with their RSVP because I am definitely gonna do the personalized hoodies. I thought about having something pre-made that like I would order the hoodies and customize them for my friends in advance, but I always like to have some sort of like activity or thing to do at my parties. And I think customizing your own hoodie as an activity at the party would be really cute. So basically I'm gonna provide pink hoodie in everybody's size and then provide like iron on patches, like different like shapes and letters, like Valentine's Day theme, like pink and red letters and stuff that they can iron on and have it like all set up. I wanted something like cute and easy to do like while we watch the movie type of thing. I did already find a listing. This just like standard Gildan's light pink hoodie is in stock. If I order it today, it'll get here by Wednesday. So if I order it tomorrow, I'm sure it'll get here by Thursday, which is like just enough time. They do also have like this bright pink. They do have red. Should I let people choose what color they want? I'll think about it. All right, so Zoe just left for the day, but we made really good progress. I have this whole shopping list now of everything for the party, food, drinks, decorations, stuff for our little activities, custom hoodie station, friendship bracelets. She actually did very thorough research and like inspiration planning. She had like three pages worth of ideas to start off with. And then I just narrowed it down from here. So it's been super helpful having like a second brain to kind of come up with different ideas. Normally I pretty much do everything myself aside from having my mom's help, of course. Like my mom is always a part of my party planning, but usually most of the, you know, I, not to take away credit from Chef Tony, but most of the creative ideas do come from me and she normally just kind of helps me execute them. But Zoe has been helping with actually coming up with more creative ideas. So that's been nice because, you know, two heads are better than one. So I'm excited for the Galentine's party, but this week is gonna be pretty busy because not only am I planning this Galentine's party for Saturday, as well as still just working on regular content and behind the scenes influencer stuff, but I have a big influencer project this week that is not my normal thing. So I am shooting a special piece of content with a major, major brand, and it is going to be a full production. It's kind of similar to something I've done before, but not really. It's similar in the sense that that I, I don't know if y'all remember when I did that live stream thing, I had a whole crew of people coming into my house, like full lights, camera, action, professional setup. Like they just took over this whole space and like set up all their stuff to shoot this professional live stream thing. So it's gonna be kind of similar to that in the sense that there's literally gonna be 20 people who are like flying in to uh, be the crew for this production. And they're bringing all the lights and camera and everything like that again. And it's just gonna be like this really, you know, fancy professional production. So I'm excited, I'm a little bit nervous. It's not the same thing that I did last time. It's a whole different thing. So that's what's making me kind of nervous because it's like something I've never done before as far as this exact piece of content and what exactly we're filming. I'm really excited. It's a really special opportunity. Like when y'all see what it is, you'll see what I mean. I feel cool that they chose me. I feel, I feel very validated. This is happening this Thursday. So today is Monday on Wednesday. 
the crew is coming to look at my house and see how they want to set everything up. And then on Thursday, all day is the full production, the, the full shoot. It's probably gonna be a long day. It's gonna be a lot going on. So there's like a lot of prep that I need to do for that while also getting ready for this party on Saturday while also just living my normal life and doing my normal responsibilities. So stay tuned. Okay, it's later at night after dinner now and I bought ingredients when I was doing my pantry revamp and restock to make a dump cake, AKA ashy peach soup, ashy peach cobbler. If you know, you know, if you were a real OG, if you was watching me in 2020 during COVID times, you may remember when I discovered and became obsessed with dump cakes, which is basically you get a can of pie filling, whether it's like cherry, peach, apple pie filling, and then you get a box of cake mix. And that's basically all the ingredients and you dump it in a pan, you bake it and it kind of makes it like a peach cobbler type of thing. Anyways, I haven't made it in years. I used to make it all the time in like 2020 and I haven't made it since then. And I just, it just like came to me in a dream. Like whatever happened to the dump cakes? And then when I was restocking my pantry, I like got all the different flavors of filling. So I have cherry, peach, caramel apple, and regular apple. I think I want to try the caramel apple cause I've never seen this before and I wanted to try it. And then I just have classic yellow cake mix. I'm clearly kind of in a throwback mood. We're throwing it back to Ray's week. We're throwing it back to the ashy cobbler. I don't even remember why I called it that. <laughs> I think just because like when you put the cake mix on top, it's kind of like powdery if you don't cook it quite right. But this is the easiest recipe of life. If you haven't seen it, let me show you. You literally get one of these little pans, crack open your can of filling. Ooh, ooh, this looks and smells super good. This caramel apple. Mmm, I just licked the top of the thing. That is very good. Anyways, you just dump this in. I guess if you wanted to doctor this up by adding some additional flavorings or seasoning, but I mean, this already has like cinnamon and everything. So you don't really need to add anything to it and make sure I get it all out. Oh crap, I need to preheat my oven. Preheat the oven to 350. So you do an even layer of your filling, like so. I could eat this straight out of the can with a spoon. Mm. Mm. <laughs> then you literally just get your cake mix and you do an even layer sprinkled on top of whatever fruit filling you're doing. It doesn't really take a whole box of cake mix, maybe like half. You don't want it to be too thick of a layer, just like a nice covering, a decent covering, a decent little layer, but not like too much. It needs to be proportional to the amount of fruit you have. Make sure it's even, but you don't mix it up. You want it to be in layers. So you want it to be fruit and powder, separate layers like that. Then you just need a bunch of little pats of butter and you have to evenly make a layer of butter squares on top of the cake mix. And when the butter melts, when you put it in the oven, that's what like activates the cake mix into like a cobbler crumble topping. So it's not just powdery, but that's why you need to make sure that you have enough butter to really make it work. Cause if you don't have enough butter evenly distributed, then it's just gonna be powdery on the top. Like so, but just do like thin pieces of butter. You don't need big old hunks. You just need an even covering. And then I am gonna add a little cinnamon sprinkled across the top just for a little razzle dazzle, especially with this caramel apple pie flavor. And then you put it in the oven on 350 for 30 to 45 minutes. It does take a minute to actually bake all the way through and that's it. Around the 30, 35 minute mark, you should start noticing it being nice and bubbly and starting to get golden brown on the top. You wanna see that pie feeling bubbling up through the top from the bottom, you know what I mean? And once it looks no longer powdery on the top and more like a cobbler, then you know it's done. And there she is. A nice golden brown crumble crust on top of a bubbly, ooey gooey caramel apple <laughs> fruity <laughs> pie filling. Basically an apple crumble, apple crisp cobbler. See that? See that? Mmm, smells delicioso. I don't have any ice cream or like dairy free ice cream, but I do have this non dairy almond milk whipped cream for a little razzle dazzle. 
And then, if you wanna make it real cute, a little dusting for garnish. Cute, look at that. Quick taste test, Deroni. I've only ever made this in peach filling and cherry filling. I've never done it with apple, let alone this caramel apple. Caramel, can you say caramel or caramel? Caramel. I say caramel. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. You gotta make sure you put just the right amount of butter. Not too much butter, because you don't want it to be drowning in butter, but you need that butter to really bring it together. This would be great with some vanilla ice cream. It is Tuesday. Started off the morning with the painters getting here bright and early to finish up their painting job. They finished everything, so all the cracks and flaws and scuffs and marks all around my house are now completely fixed and repainted. Zoe got here at 9 a.m. The painters got here at like 9.30. Zoe was just working on various little tasks this morning. Um, she helps with everything from just random little around the house things, such as restocking the cat food drawer to bigger things like helping with content and helping with party planning and stuff like that. So she's been doing all of those things and everything in between. I went to get my nails done this afternoon afternoon I ended up getting this chrome French tip design not sure how I feel about it like I like it but I don't like it but I like it but I don't like it I don't know I was trying to do something a little bit different but I just definitely needed my nails fixed because I had some broken ones and cracked ones and I did not want to have crusty nails for this big shoot on Thursday so that took up most of my afternoon and Zoe was just here working on stuff while I was doing that came home and then since the painters were done a lot of our furniture was kind of like jumbled around from that. So I was just moving everything back into place. Zaya's stuff up in her playroom needed to be moved back into place. And also Zaya is currently working on organizing her toys again for the 50 11th time. That is an ongoing thing that constantly needs to be done because Zaya has a lot of toys. And as much as we try to declutter and donate, so many more toys just constantly seem to be coming in from where? I don't know. It's not just from me, it's just from the world. Where are all these toys coming from? From relatives, from friends, Friends, birthdays, Christmas, and also being on certain PR lists, it just gets a little bit overwhelming and I'm definitely wanting to do a very intense declutter this time and almost kind of ready to kind of redo her playroom anyway because she's kind of outgrowing the original setup and it's about time to kind of rethink her playroom. So she's actually still up there right now working on organizing. Also, when I had gotten back from getting my nails done, the cleaning people were here and lately they have have expanded their team to be more people. So sometimes there'll be like three, four, five people on the cleaning team all in my house at the same time. Like one person is vacuuming, one person's doing the dishes, one person is doing laundry. So it kind of feels like a madhouse in here, but it helps them get the whole house clean a lot faster. So that's good. So they were doing that. I was moving furniture. Zaya was organizing her toys. Zoe was still here working on stuff. But now it is 5 p.m. Everybody is gone. I am now trying to finish up some content related things. It's hard to explain when I can't tell you the details of like which brands I'm working with and what exactly I'm doing for the brands, but just know that lately I've been doing a lot of brand deals on TikTok. I used to do most of my brand deals on YouTube. So that would be filming sponsored segments, you know, with certain products, following certain guidelines for my YouTube videos, and then doing the whole YouTube editing process to make sure it's also edited appropriately for whatever brand I'm working with. These days, I don't do as much of that. You may have noticed in my YouTube videos, there's not as many sponsorships, but I've been doing more on TikTok. So I currently have three sponsored TikToks that I'm working on, actually four, because I just finished up one. Outside of the sponsored stuff, I'm working on a non-sponsored, just my regular YouTube video, which will be the video that you see before this video. <laughs> I'm just working on making sure that that's being properly edited, that we have a thumbnail ready to go. What is the title gonna be? I spend a lot of time on like the nitty gritty details of pretty much every piece of content that I post because if it's sponsored, there's a lot of guidelines that I must adhere to and I have to be super detailed with it, like contractually. But then even with my non-sponsored content, I have learned through the help of my mom who specializes in YouTube strategy, the details of how your thumbnail image looks and the exact wording that you choose for your title and your description box and the tags and just all the behind the scenes setup stuff and posting related stuff of your content. Those details really do matter and do make a difference in the performance of your content. I really end up 
up sitting in front of my computer for hours just like making sure of all of those details. But yes, as of right now, I have three TikToks mainly that are the priority for today that I need to finish up. So that's what I'm doing right now. And then it's gonna be time to figure out what we gonna eat for dinner. And this is what Bougie does while I'm in here working. Must be nice. All right, it is 10.35 and I'm officially done with all of my content editing and voiceover recording and copywriting and all those things for today. I wasn't working on it straight through this whole time. I had to stop and do dinner with Zaya and the whole night routine with her as well as I stopped and ate and I did get distracted here and there doing other things, but it can be just very time consuming and tedious to edit and all that type of stuff, especially when I have multiple different pieces of content, multiple different brand deals that I'm working on. <sighs> But yes, I am finally done. Bougie is still here in the same spot, living the life, must be nice. Zaya is asleep. She's been asleep for a couple hours now. And now it's time for me to finally get ready for bed and go to sleep. Good morning, it's Wednesday morning. And I just wanna say for all of the people who always say like, oh my God, you're a super mom. Like you do so much and you do it so well. How do you juggle all of it? How do you do it? I don't. I don't because let me tell you, last night I was super tired, fell asleep. Just been feeling overall very sleepy and tired lately and feeling like I'm not getting enough sleep. I have my alarm set. I actually have two alarms set because I'm not a morning person and we have to wake up at 6 a.m. to get to high school on time. And that's really difficult for me just in general. So I have two alarms set in the morning to make sure that I get up. Tell me why this morning in my slumber, in my sleepy state, I snoozed both alarms and just decided, no, we're not doing that, I guess. And so I woke up late. I woke up with five minutes to get out the door. So Zaya also didn't wake up because I wake up and then I wake her up. So I hopped out of bed when I realized what I had done and what time it was, jumped out of bed and ran upstairs to <laughs> rip her out of bed and like throw clothes on her, do everything like in hyper speed I'm um, running like I didn't have her lunch packed or nothing from last night because I went to bed last night without pre-prepping anything because I was tired and we were literally running around like chickens with our head cut off this morning but did she get to school on time she did she did so hey all's well that ends well <laughs> but yeah I'm definitely not a super mom I don't I, uh -huh. <laughs> Anyways, now it's almost eight o'clock in the morning and I'm just making my coffee and trying to decompress from that chaotic morning. I've been using this Dose & Co collagen powder. It's supposed to be good for your hair, skin, and nails, basically. Vitamin C, 10 grams of collagen, hair, skin, and nail support. This is like the Khloe Kardashian endorsed brand and they just sent it to me and I just was like, hey, might as well try it. It's not sponsored or anything. So so they say you can just mix it into anything. It's completely unflavored. So I just have it sitting here so I can mix it into my coffee because I religiously drink a cup of coffee every morning. So I've been using this actually pretty consistently. I went through a whole container of it already. This is my second container. And like low key, I don't know, but I feel like it's been helping my skin. So I just mix the powder into my coffee before I put my creamer in with my little handheld mixer. I like this because I just go like this and it like spins so fast that it kind of cleans itself and dries itself off so then I just put it back and then I've got my creamer and my frother can't live without my frother because I love that thick fluffy cream and that is my everyday coffee routine another little random thing I saw this on TikTok and I ordered it off of Amazon they are cord wrap arounders for your appliances so they're like these little things that you can stick on to any appliance I've been loving my new air fryer I think she's really cute I have left her up on the 
counter. I'll have this linked for you guys if y'all wanna check it out. It's from Walmart. It doesn't have anything for the cord, and so I just still have it with the same little twist tie that it came packaged up with. But these little things, you're supposed to like stick it to the back of your appliance like this, or I guess like this. I don't know if it matters which way you put it. And then you can wrap the cord around so it's not like showing, you know what I mean? I only need like the tiniest bit sticking out to plug in. And then it gives you a really clean look, especially cause like the whole point of me getting this new air fryer is to have it look nice, to leave it out on the counter. I don't like a cluttered look. The cord is part of that. You want the cord to look really clean too if you're just gonna leave it like that. So that actually works really well. All right, so Zoe gets here at 9 a.m. It's about 8.20 right now. I try to take some time between dropping Zaya off at school, I come home I make my coffee, then Zoe gets here at nine. In that in-between time, I have to kind of gather myself in order to gather Zoe, if that makes sense, because Zoe relies on me to figure out what needs to be done, what does she need to be working on for the day. We use ClickUp, this um, kind of organizational tasking app. We use Slack, which is a communication app. We use Google Calendar, but I go on ClickUp and I basically assign Zoe tasks for the day. So it's like an organized thing online where she kind of has a to-do list that she can mark things off and we can make comments back and forth and we can just have everything super organized. So before she gets here every morning, I try to take this time to make sure like, have I assigned her all the tasks? Like what did she finish yesterday? What is she still working on? I can kind of see everything. So here's kind of what that looks like. The completed ones, the ones that are on hold, the ones that are still left to do right now the main things that are going on are still putting things together for the Galentine's party this weekend, making sure that everything is good to go for this big special content shoot that I keep saying that I have tomorrow, and a couple of other just like around the house random things. She also is working on some other things behind the scenes, and like I know I keep being super vague. It's just hard because like there's certain things I can't talk about yet, there's certain things I don't want to talk about yet because it's not for sure yet and I don't want to like jinx it or say too much but just know when I can give y'all the details I will give y'all the details I'm not trying to be vague on purpose just to be like Ugh, mysterious but it's like I literally can't talk about it I'm just going to take some time now to make sure that all this is situated and also kind of map out my day I need to figure out the order of operations because tomorrow is the big shoot so I need to make sure that I'm good as far as my glam situation I'm gonna self tan tonight. I'm going to wash my wig and get my wig prepped and probably install my wig tonight. I bought some eyelash extensions like DIY, like falscara lash extensions that I want to do. I also have to get Zaya's outfit and everything situated because she is going to be in the shoot tomorrow as well. My outfit, I haven't even thought about what I'm going to wear. So all that prep and then I need to go to some in-person stores to get some stuff for the Galentine's party. I ordered a a lot of stuff on Amazon but there's certain things that I need to like check in store and I could send Zoe to do it for me but you know when you're putting together something creative like a party like sometimes you just want to go browse around the store and see what they have so like I kind of personally want to go browse around and if I just send Zoe to pick up a few things then I don't get to personally like look and pick things out myself so that's been one thing that I've been struggling with is like with hiring a personal assistant like I do need her help and there are times when it probably would be better to just delegate and just send her to do it but like I want to do it myself and it's like but I can't do everything myself and that's not very helpful if I keep saying like well no I still want to do it myself then like what is the point of hiring a personal assistant so that's been something that I've been kind of like struggling with maybe Zoe and I should go together that way she can also start learning my personal taste and then maybe next time I can feel like I can trust her to go by herself shopping for Galentine's prepping all of my stuff and Zaya stuff for the shoot tomorrow. And then at 4 p.m. today, the production team for the shoot tomorrow is coming to scout my house and just do a walk around and figure out exactly where and how they wanna shoot. So that's kind of a little overview for what today is gonna be like. 
We're in Michael's, I'm with Zoe. I'm trying to be sneaky because sometimes I do get in trouble for filming in stores, but I wanted to just generally look at what kind of cute Valentine's Day stuff they might have, and they do have a whole lot of stuff. Do I really need any of this stuff? That's up for debate. I could use a few extra little decorations for the party. They have like little cups and plates and of course all the crafty stuff, which the only crafty stuff I need is the vinyl for the hoodies. That's mainly what I came here for. I wish they had more pink stuff versus red stuff. This is what I came here for. The vinyl for the Cricut for the hoodie customization, but I need not adhesive vinyl, I need iron-on vinyl or heat transfer, which this is all adhesive. I don't see heat transfer. Oh, here it is. Easy Weed Eco Stretch Heat Transfer Vinyl. I was gonna get red, pink, white, and black, I guess because the hoodies that we're putting on is like a super light pink. Okay, just kidding, Zoe found a whole nother aisle. I just wasn't looking behind me. They have a lot more. They have glitter, which could be nice. Do people like glitter or do I just like glitter? That's the question. The actual Cricut brand is a lot more expensive. It's like double the price. They've got this Sizer brand that's a little bit more affordable. It's patterned heat transfer. This is, oh, this is heat transfer too. 11 by 36 for $22. Yeah, I need to stick to this brand. I think I'm gonna do this glitter. Just a few things, you know. Good old Dollar Tree, I think always have the good stuff for parties. I'm thinking pink serveware for like the waffle station. I should probably think through like what I actually need based on what we're actually serving, but I don't feel like thinking about that, so. <laughs> I got red plates and silverware, pink serveware, some little doilies, some little cups, and then all that stuff is just for Zaya's class for her Valentine's. Lunch break at good old Chick-fil-A. <laughs> it is 2.30 and I have not eaten today, so. Zoe and I are taking a little lunch break in between shopping. We still wanna go to one more Dollar Tree location and we might have to go to Party City, I think, to get the rest of the supplies that we need for the Valentine's party. So I actually didn't realize what time it was when we were at Chick-fil-A. It was already time to head home because Zaya was about to get dropped off. My dad picks her up from school and drops her off at about 3.15 every day. And it was already three o'clock when we were eating. And so it's about 3.30 now. Normally Zoe leaves at four, but she left a little early. I had a bunch of donation stuff in the garage. So she just loaded all that up into her car and left early so she could go drop off all that donation stuff. It's just me and Zaya here now. Zaya is working on. Letters. Can you show what what it looks like? She's doing a workbook practicing letters and spelling. Well, mommy, I really like practice letters and work at school too. What did you learn at school? Did you learn anything new at school today? I don't remember. You don't remember anything? What's one thing that your teacher taught you today? Well, she talked about um, we were, there was a new game that she made with cards and it goes in the word workstation at school and, you, and it was a bingo game and we played it. And what, what was it teaching you about? Well, it was teaching us about letter brand. So it was like a letter brand bingo. We'll pick a card and we'll have to find the first starting of the word that has a blend. What does that mean? It's, like when two letters go together to make a new sound? No, it's two letters with their own sound and it's like blue, sk, sk. Yeah, so like B, L, mm. blue, S, C, sk. or S, K. Sk. Like blue or skate. Okay, I didn't even know that was called a letter blend, so you taught me something new today. In the meanwhile, um, one thing that I don't think I mentioned yesterday about this big shoot tomorrow is that it's an interview, but it's like kind of an intensive interview. And they sent over the questions earlier and I need to really like type in and like pre-formulate my answers to these questions. Although I am gonna be like speaking from the heart and just speaking candidly, you know, when I'm on set tomorrow, I do wanna like pre-formulate my answers to these questions just because the nature of the questions is a little bit more like serious and detailed and I want to be thoughtful with my responses and I don't know why I thought it was only gonna be like five questions but it's actually 
21 questions. <laughs> and like I said, they're kind of like in-depth types of questions. So this is kind of feeling like a homework assignment for me to sit here and fill these in. And I need to have this ready by tomorrow morning and I haven't started. So I really need to do that. So it's after five o'clock now. The production crew was here scouting everything out, trying to decide where they wanted to shoot everything tomorrow. Oh, he has a whole oh my God. Oh, he wants to go My Long story short, they kind of want to shoot multiple clips like kind of all around the whole house it seems like based on what they were saying. So now I'm kind of like, okay, my whole house needs to be camera ready tomorrow in terms of like just being clean and organized and just like perfectly set up and move all the clutter out of the way. So I'm kind of like, uh, yikes, that's a little bit more work than I thought I was going to have to do because I thought they were going to kind of just pick like one main area, but they kind of want to do something in each room they're like oh the glam room the closet the kitchen the pantry outside on the patio we can get a shot like this and we can get a shot like that and like i get it for what they're trying to achieve but i'm just kind of like oh okay now i need to make sure that my house is ready but i also still need to answer those interview questions i haven't started on that yet i also still need to figure out my hair and outfit situation i want to wear this wig but it is in shambles right now like it needs to be completely washed and restyled and installed and everything so that's like a whole process and then my outfit what am i gonna wear i didn't like buy a new specific outfit for this because i'm like i know i have some in this closet in this whole wide closet that i can wear it doesn't need to be anything specific or fancy it just needs to be like a nice appropriate casual kind of neutral outfit like i just want to look like my everyday self but look put together and i'm thinking like neutral colors they said keep it neutral or if i do want to incorporate a color it should be blue which blue is really not my color especially when it comes to clothing so i'm like mm, i'll probably just keep it neutral and i do have like plenty of neutral clothes but it's just hard because like i want to be stylish i want to be myself and i want to be appropriate and i want to be like it's like i just don't know so i need to figure out my outfit maybe something like at the same time, it's gonna be like sh me like around the house. So like, why would I be wearing like a full leather jacket inside my house? So that kind of doesn't make sense. But I do want to be stout. Like, I don't want to just have like, like this is what I really wear around the house, clearly. But I don't want to, this is like sloppy for what we're doing tomorrow. So how do I look put together, but still comfortable and casual around the house, normal everyday vibes? So I gotta figure that out and like wash this wig or something. I'm not gonna just wear this i've been wearing like these little ponytails and just my my little tiny bun with my natural hair and i don't want to do that i want to have like especially if my outfit is going to be more low-key i really want the hair and makeup to be and you'll see why when you see what this is you'll see why i'm having this thought process so yeah prepping the house prepping my interview questions, prepping my wig, having my outfit picked out. Zaya needs an outfit picked out as well. I think that's it. I don't know, I'm nervous. maybe do like a cardigan moment i have this chocolate maxi cardigan that i forgot i had honestly maybe if i do a nice like a nice solid bodysuit jeans and a cardigan like you know i'm chilling i got jeans and a sweater on but like in a cute way does that make sense for like around the house right or maybe a shacket a soft shacket oh i have i did get another shacket a chocolate brown shacket from target recently it's in the glam room if i do chocolate brown long maxi cardigan with like a nude or white bodysuit do i even have a freaking white bodysuit I feel like some of my clothes are missing out of my closet. You know what's funny is that with Zaya growing now, and y'all know she's tall. I mean, she's skinny, but she's tall. My housekeeping people, like, cause they do laundry too, and they like put it away. They get confused between Zaya's clothes and my clothes. Like they can't tell if it's Zaya's size or my size. Cause low key, some of my little crop tops look like the same size as her regular shirts. And so they like hang her little shirts up with my crop tops. And sometimes I find my stuff in her closet. It's kind of funny. Olive 
green bodysuit with a chocolate brown cardigan and like jeans. No, I don't think that's, it's just, it's kind of giving diarrhea. You know what I mean? It's giving a diarrhea color palette. Maybe if I did an olive green bodysuit and the cream colored jacket and jeans. I only have still to this day, I remember saying this like a year or two ago, but still to this day, I only really have one pair of jeans that I actually really like. It's so hard for me to find jeans that hit all the marks for me. This same pair of Abercrombie jeans that are discontinued by the way, so I can't even ever get them again. I could do something like this. And then I feel like shoes don't really matter because A, it's gonna be around the house. So like, would I really be wearing shoes? And I also don't think they're gonna show my feet at all. But if I did need a shoe, I would do like, uh, what shoes would I do for like a casual? My problem is I only know how to dress up. I only know how to dress extremely down and extremely up. I don't know how to do the in-between. I've always said this. It's either bummy sweatpants, hoodie, Crocs, Uggs, or it's full blown glam stiletto heel. Like I don't know how to do the in between where it's like casual, but you still look nice, especially when it comes to shoes. Like what shoes do you wear when you don't want to wear heels, but you're also not just going to wear Crocs? What is the in between shoe? What is a casual shoe? I don't, I don't, is it a sneaker? What shoe would you wear with this? That's not a heel. A sneaker? A boot, perhaps? Now, if it was summertime, a sandal. You know, a sandal is always a good go-to, casual, but still cute. But like in the fall and winter, what do you wear? I don't have very many sneakers at all. Do you wear like a, a boot, like a like this, with the cream colored jacket? Cause it kind of matches the cream color, but then it's, sometimes it just feels like this is not the this is not the right style. Like this is a very like edgy, heavy style, and like sometimes you know th this outfit is giving just more like not edgy. So like why would I wear that boot with it? I wish y'all could actually answer me right now live and help me. Cause I really don't know what to wear. Just got an Amazon delivery. I think it might be some of the stuff for the Galentine's party. My dead plants are still bushy. <laughs> it's all the hoodies that I ordered for my friends. Oh, oh wait, wait, yeah, no. At first I thought I didn't order enough, but pretty sure I did. I just need to take out mine so I can try it on and see what size. Yeah, I got a medium for myself. These are Amazon Essentials hoodies, like the Amazon brand. So I'm not sure like how they're gonna look and feel. Oh, they're actually really nice quality. Ooh, soft and fleecy on the inside. Like that super like literal fleece texture, which I love. And it's a cute light pink color. These are men's sizes, so I got a medium. Actually, for this to be men's sizes, this is a men's medium. It actually runs like a tiny bit smaller than I thought it would be. It's okay, like it definitely fits and it's slightly oversized on me. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, maybe this is kind of a fit I was expecting. I'm just hoping that everybody else's sizes that they told me fit how they want it to fit, but I think it should be fine. Are you launching your water bottle? Okay. Bye. All right, y'all, it's Thursday morning. It is 7.21 a.m. I just dropped Zaya off at school and I'm pulling up back to my house. I literally fell asleep last night fully clothed in my outfit from yesterday because I was sitting there procrastinating, saying like, okay, in five minutes, I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna like do the rest of what I need to do to prep for tomorrow. And I kept saying like, okay, five more minutes, five more minutes. And I kept sitting there and I kept sitting there until I inevitably, of course, just fell asleep and did not finish prepping the stuff I wanted to prep for today. And I just fully fell asleep in my clothes, which is so just like, oh, why did I do that? But I think I was just feeling like anxious and overwhelmed and like a little bit paralyzed with anxiety. Like, I don't know if y'all ever have gotten that feeling when like, you know, you have so much to do that like, you just don't even know where to start and you just can't even like get up to start. So yeah, that's not good. Good news is 
woke up on time this morning, got Zaya to school actually a little bit early this morning so that I would have a little bit extra time now back home to get myself together. The production crew is coming at 8.30. So I literally have about an hour right now to start getting myself together before they get here. I don't have to be like ready and on set until after 10 o'clock, but you know, I don't wanna be completely in shambles when they arrive to my house. So I wanna at least have my hair done and be dressed. I can still be working on like doing my makeup while they're working on setting up, but I wanna be like somewhat ready by 8.30 and I only have an hour. So, mm, feeling a little stressed, but it's my own fault because I did not handle it properly last night, but we gonna pull it together. It's 8.10, this is where I'm at. My mom is already here to kind of help facilitate things. Zoe doesn't get here till nine. I thought the production crew wasn't getting here till 8.30, but apparently they just pulled up early. I look like this. Luckily my mom is here to greet them, so I don't necessarily have to greet them looking like this. I'm gonna try and get this wig on my head so I look somewhat normal before I walk out there. Chaos, shambles, hoopla, you know the drill. It's show time! <laughs> So we're on lunch break now, I got kava. Zoe ordered it, I think, right Zoe? Ordered it for me. Everybody is taking their lunch break now. They have a whole setup outside, like in the garage and in my driveway. They've got like how you normally have at a shoot, like craft services with the table with the food and snacks and everything and coffee. So everyone's out there taking a little lunch break. Lunch break. Hey. I banished them into the driveway for lunch. No. <laughs> we just wrapped up the first main section, which was the actual interview, where I was sitting down and being interviewed, and they asked me a bunch of questions. I think it was like 20 to 25 questions total. And you guys, of course, will see what kinds of questions they were. I don't want to give it away just yet. I'm not sure what all I can talk about in this vlog since it's not out yet, but when the actual video comes out, you guys will see what I mean when I say interview questions. Some of the questions were actually a little difficult to answer just because they were like on like deeper topics. There's a lot of misconceptions about being a single mom, being a black single mom. People people tap into stereotypes that aren't necessarily true. And I did feel like I was struggling to find my words a little bit, but I think I pulled it together, hopefully. And of course, with the power of editing and everything, like I'm sure they're gonna, you know, make it work. But that was probably like the hardest part of the whole day. So that's over with now. So now they're completely taking that setup down and they're gonna reset to film some like B-roll shots all around the house. So I think we're definitely gonna do a scene in my office. I think upstairs in the playroom, they've already got it set up outside, but I don't know if that was just for this shot or if we're actually gonna do the patio shot like they said. They had a few different ideas for like a lot of different rooms in the house for B-roll. So we'll see what all we end up doing, but we're doing good on time because according to the schedule, I think we're like an hour ahead of schedule. So we should have time to play around with some different B-roll shots. And I'm gonna do an outfit change as well. I was gonna do my lunch first and then change. And then later when Zaya gets home from school at 3.15, she's gonna be in some of the B-roll shots too. Why are you squinting like that? You're like, I don't know. To the vlog. <laughs> and this is your production company, yeah. I heard? Yeah. Okay. Powerless Productions. Black owned production company. <laughs> <laughs> Bougie. I just want to go in there and give him a hug. But like, he will. <laughs> Bougie is in here he just screaming. I'm sorry. I know you're angry, but you have to be in here just for a little bit longer, okay? Okay, go back. Sorry, bye. We're shooting B-roll. I just shot a scene in the craft room with my DIY supplies. And then I think we're gonna do a shot in my glam room, like sitting at my makeup vanity and a shot in my closet. And then we're waiting for Zaya to get home in the next 45 minutes to do the scenes with her. But they're also just like shooting, I think the term is texture shots. Hmm, learning. <laughs> of just like the stuff and not me in it. Zaya's home from school now, so we're shooting her scenes. Okay. So we're doing the getting home from school scene. <laughs> we 
What do you think about all this? You like it? <laughs> oh. You ready for your... Do you think you would want to be an actress and be in commercials and stuff all the time like this? Yeah, no? Okay. An artist. What I say? You say you like it, so... Okay, you like it a little bit. Okay. I don't like it that much. I don't like it that much to do it all the time. All right, so we just wrapped all of Zaya's scenes. We're done with the ones with her. We're getting ready to shoot the very last shot of the day, I believe, which is like my hero shot, like kind of just like a portrait of my face, I think, for like the intro. So they're doing this setup. I think they're do using that thing to like slide in, and then it's like framed under the archway. I think this is gonna be the last shot, and then we'll be done. All right, that is officially a wrap. The crew, I think they're just packing up their last few things outside, but they packed up everything out of the house. They're out of the house, and now Grammy, Zaya, Papa, and PJ. PJ's gonna meet us at the restaurant. We're just gonna go out to eat. RETV's treat, a celebratory dinner, if you will. We tired, so don't nobody feel like cooking or anything, so we're just gonna go have a nice little family dinner. Couldn't decide what to order, so I just ordered everything. Fried okra, calamari. Brussels sprouts, shrimp. And me and my mom were sharing. Zaya, of course, got plain cheese pizza, spaghetti and meatballs. What did you get? Kumaloni pasta. La Kumaloni. <laughs> La Kumaloni pasta. 